Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of High Energy Girl. And today we have Jen Trepic, who is the host of the awesome podcast called Salad with a Side of Fries. Now, Jen is a health coach, has been in practice for over a decade, and she will clear up some myths, misinformation, bad science and marketing to reveal the truth of how to eat and how to cheat. She is a hoot. So let's go and say hello to Jen. Hey everyone, welcome to High Energy Girl, a podcast helping women to age stronger because it is never too late to get fit, be strong, and feel sexy. I'm your host, Tracy Gluhide, health coach and personal trainer and founder of highenergygirl.com. Each week we will either have a guest interview which will provide you encouragement or an actionable tip to help you age stronger, or I will do a solo episode. Please also join our awesome Facebook group called High Energy Girls, and I'm looking forward to see you on the inside of that group and hope you enjoy today's show. Give a woman a fish, feed her for a day. Teach a woman to fish, feed her for a lifetime. Teach a woman to teach a woman to fish, end world hunger. Have you ever wanted to help people improve their health journey? Have you thought about coaching people with a keto lifestyle? Would you like to become an integrative health coach? Well, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, or IIN as we call it, is the largest nutrition school in the country. And in 2011, I graduated from their program and became a health coach. It was completely awesome. We learned over a hundred different dietary theories and talk about craziness and confusion. My wish for you is that we can lock arms and create a tribe of health coaches all around the country, all around the world to spread the keto message. If this resonates with you and you would like to look into this option deeper, please go to my blog at highenergygirl.com and click on the link to the right of the homepage. Here you can grab the curriculum guide and see if it inspires you. Since I care so much about my listeners, I negotiated the very best tuition rate for you at IIN. Either you can contact them directly and give them my name, or I will introduce you to a counselor so you can decide if this is a good fit for you and your career goals. Let me know how I can support you in this coaching career opportunity. Hey, Jen, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Me too. I mean, how could I not want to have the girl that's salad and a side of fries come on the show? I mean, when I saw that name, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to talk to her. Well, thank you. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. So for the listeners that don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So um, I'm a health coach similar to you. My specialty is weight management and I have the podcast as well, right? Salad with a side of fries. But I really came to all of this stuff, like many of us, through my own, I call it a saga. (laughs) (laughs) It was my own saga of weight management and I feel like the word journey just doesn't do it justice. (laughs) Um, I was a dancer growing up and I lived, I was, I joke that I was the skinny one in a family of dieters, but I also realize now that that just means I was on a diet my whole life without really realizing it. And, you know, I really started to gain weight kind of in between high school and college. And then I was like, okay, I know what to do. Like I watched my family do this my whole life. You know, and I tried every diet under the sun, gained and lost, you know, over and over. And ultimately, what I learned is like what I call the nutrition education, we're all supposed to know and no one ever taught us. Mm. And it shifted everything for me. It shifted all my food decisions from being emotional, right? Like thinking I have no willpower. Like, why do I suck? You know, (laughs) to Mm -hmm. intellectual of like, oh, I get why that's appealing right now. So what I actually need is this. So I feel like, you know, that really allowed me to kick my food issues. And from there, I set out on a mission to pay it forward and help people help themselves with this information. So I started working with clients on the side of my full-time job in late 2007. And I was health coaching, you know, on the side for almost 12 years before I left my full-time job because I was doing both at the time felt sustainable. So why not, you know, just keep doing both? 
So um, I left my full-time job July of 2019, and then I launched the podcast. And now I guess, you know, the rest is history. Here we are. I get to sit with Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you have a lot of things you said I want to ask you about. So you said the yeah. nutrition education that we never got that we should have. What, what was that exactly? Yeah. What did you mean by that? Well, for most of us, right, like we grew up with that food pyramid, mm -hmm. right? That isn't based on science or biology or nutrition, that was actually based on economics. Mm -hmm. It was about getting us to eat what we grow in this country. We grow corn, wheat, soy, right? Like no one on the planet has a grain deficiency, but yet <laughs> we were told, <laughs> right? But we were told that's what we're supposed to eat the most of in any day. You know, no wonder we're all confused. Yeah. And you know, our food industry, it's very chemical that we crave certain things that remember the Pringles commercial, like once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like that's chemical. It's not you. It's not your willpower. It's not, you know, it's chemical of what happens when we're feeding our body chemicals instead of nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, of course, well, what other outcome is there? Like we weren't taught that our body can't respond to these new to nature molecules, right? Like our body only has so many signals it can send us. You know this, right? Like you've talked about leptin before, you know, like our body only has so many signals. So if we're eating a ton of food like substances, <laughs> right? Things that we eat that are sold to us as food, but don't actually provide nutrients, or vitamins and minerals or anything that our body actually knows what to do with, our body's only option is continue to send hunger signals in the hopes that you'll eat something that gives the body something it knows what to do with. Oh my gosh, that was so well said, exactly. And they have that <laughs> whole food science thing, right? So that food yep. scientists work for these big manufacturers to make awesome. you crave the food. It's Correct. so bad and yeah, so. Yeah. I can't, it's like a whole soapbox issue for me. Like I just, me too. it's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Like when COVID first hit, I swear to God, it said lucky charms, immune boosting. I'm like, are you freaking oh kidding me? I know. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are such a bunch of liars. And I always say the food pyramid's upside down. Um, yes. You know, and if it worked, if all the dogma that we are being fed through big pharma, through big food, if all of that was true, why is heart disease still the number one killer? Right. It should be solved. It should be eradicated, right? If what they're preaching right. is working, but it's not. Well, and the other crazy thing, I mean, speaking of COVID, I was on a call with um, a doctor that I work with, and we were talking about how with COVID and looking globally, right? At the countries who had the greatest number of deaths, what do they all have in common? And the top things that they have in common are the things that they eat mm. and the comorbidities. And our best vaccine is really handling all of these comorbidities and focusing on our health and what, what most people would call prevention, <laughs> right? Is really the best vaccine we can have. Sure, I 100% agree. I mean, why are they're basically killing our immune system by making us wear masks, social distancing, staying at home. So our immune system's getting depressed over all this last year, right? So people are gonna go out in the public and now all of a sudden get more colds and things because now their immune system is dampened, right? Yeah, to some degree. I mean, I think it depends on what we're doing you know, to help support our immune function, even though we're not necessarily coming into contact with a lot of pathogens like we typically would be if we were out and about and not wearing masks and things like that. And, you know, it's one of those things where, too, when we come back, you know, quote unquote, into reality, I think supporting our immune function and supporting our immune system is going to be critically important to rebuild our gut health, right, primarily. And um, to focus on that as much as we're focusing on everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh, more. I think that's yeah. 
more important because then you're preventing all disease. Yes. Right? I mean, having yep. a strong immune system helps you fight cancer. And I heard that they're projecting by 2030, half of our population to have cancer. So I'm why are they? Hard. Yeah. That's a huge number. Yeah. I so, know. So what are they doing and, about that? <laughs> Exactly. Who knows, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things and why I talk to people all the time, like being our own health advocate and being our own physician in some ways, you know, because we know what our body feels and is experiencing. And in time, we can relearn how to pay attention to our bodies, right? Like I think a lot of the things quote, you know, diets and stuff that we've been told over the years has, um, pushed us into a place of not listening to our bodies. Mm -hmm. For example, like, um, you know, like calories in calories out. Right. So we're like, Oh, I'm supposed to eat less. So I hear you hunger and I am ignoring you because I am supposed to eat less. Right. And so over time, we learn to stop paying attention to these things. But if we can return to that and learn what those things feel like and respond to it, we can be our own best advocate for our own health. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we're going to crave the things that our body actually needs. Well, mindfulness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listening. So let's talk a little bit about what your favorite types of health things are. You started talking about that a little bit, but what are your like tips that you would like to let the listeners know? Yeah. Um, so a couple of things, like I've, I'm full of things that try to like stick in your brain, right? So if you're a note taker, write these down, protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat. No big deal. Ooh. <laughs> Protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat no big deal. So protein is clean, lean protein, whatever you want that to be. Animal, plant, whatever. Clean, lean protein. Fiber is vegetables and sometimes fruit. And then the other thing that we need every day, which I have to figure out how to get into that sentence, is our quality fats. Mm. <laughs> right? So we need our quality fats every day, too, for our body to function properly. But, you know, that's really the foundation. And... The key to fat burning, you know, I know you talk a lot about keto, but I think one of the big things is also managing blood sugar. Oh, totally. You know, when our, right, like when our blood sugar is too high and when our blood sugar is too low, we're storing fat. Mm -hmm. So one of the best things we can do for ourselves is manage our blood sugar, you know, can do the things that we can do every day to make sure that our body responds to insulin and leptin and ghrelin and all these hormones that really are our metabolism in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, another one is, you know, muscle dictates metabolism. Ooh, that's a good one. Right. <laughs> So, so the more muscle we have, the more fuel we burn all the time, whether we're chilling on the couch or working out or sitting at our desk, whatever it is, we need muscle. Mm -hmm. So especially for women and especially as we get older, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. You have to keep moving your body. You have to keep building muscle. And it's so important even, you know, balance and strength, like, you know, to protect our bones and all that kind of stuff, we need to be building muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that's what I say. You want stronger bones, stronger muscles, stronger joints, better balance, mobility, and flexibility. Those are the six exactly. pillars. Yes. So yeah, exactly. I love your little catchphrases. You need to write a book with those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, what I use with my clients, right? Like there's a whole slew of them. Um, you know, I'm really big on balance, clearly, right? Salad with a side of fries. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I work a lot on like one of my big things over the years of dieting was like I was on or I was off, right? Mm -hmm. It was a good day or a bad day. And everything was very black and white. We have a lot of us have this perfectionist in us. 
you know, so one of the things that was a big deal for me to learn, and I see it over and over with my clients is to learn to live in that gray area Mm. between the black and white, you know, and that's, uh, you know, an exercise and a practice just like everything else. And I think part of that is understanding, like I say to everybody, remove the word cheat from your vocabulary. Everything is part of the plan and everything is a choice. Right. So it's reclaiming control, right? When it's a choice, we have, we're making those choice versus the foods choosing, (laughs) you know, because they have voices sometimes, you know, (laughs) (laughs) you laugh because you know. (laughs) I know, of course. Hey, I'm 55. I've been playing this game for a long time. Exactly. And it's one of those where like, again, we feel like it's just us, but it's not. Yeah. You know, we've all been there. And then, or we get on the scale and our mood is determined by whatever that said, or the, we feel really good. Our energy is great. Our clothes are fitting better, but the scale doesn't confirm that. And then all of a sudden everything else we feel no longer exists. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I think just like the calories in, calories out, you know, myth, I think another giant myth is the scale and BMI as a barometer of our success. Absolutely. (laughs) I wrote a book called No Frickin' Way, W-E-I-G-H, and it was based on a funny quote that said, why weigh yourself when you can roll in broken glass and light yourself on fire and feel the same way? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. You know, and like our doctors, so I did an episode called BMI is BS. Mm -hmm. And I started to do some research, like how did this even become the barometer? Like, why is that what we use? So turns out it was designed by this scientist, right? It had to be a guy. Was it a guy? guy. (laughs) Of course it was a guy. But a social scientist but it was designed to study populations over time. And even in his description, he says it is inappropriate for use on an individual level. Wow. And yet here we are, our doctors sit here and say, well, your BMI, you know, you really need to do something. And The truth is, I mean, we could get into some of the science of it in a second, but like it was never designed to be measuring individual people. It was about populations as a whole. Mm. That's interesting. And it was adopted to make it easier for our doctors to have conversations with their patients. Wow. And that like, like, talk about a soapbox issue, right? Like that's another one for me because like, I'm sorry, we're, we're doing this to make it easier for our doctors instead of helping our doctors learn how to have these conversations. Mm. Isn't that like, I think that's a talk about an issue like the food pyramid. This is one, a huge one. Yeah. They just don't have enough time though. Honestly, I have a client right. that I've had for about right. nine months and she's a doctor and she's like been with me for that long. So she's picked up so many nuggets of wisdom. She's like, I just keep wanting to tell them all this stuff, but I don't have the time. Right. So, yeah. And for, so for that reason, I, um, we should talk after this. Um, I work with doctors to implement wellness programs into their practice for that reason. So that our doctors can actually get paid to keep us well, because with the way the system works right now, she has to see 70 patients a day in order to keep the lights on. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more out of necessity than desire, you know, and it's really sad. Yeah. And what, you know, the consequence of that is all of our health. Mm-hmm. Well, plus, since you talked about that, pharmaceutical com- or do- doctors in medical school were trained by pharmaceutical yes. companies to prescribe medicine. So they know how to diagnose and treat disease by popping pills. But we know that with Hippocrates, you know, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, that really, truly, that is like should be the first point of yeah. awareness, you know, and education for the patients. But I feel bad for doctors. They just don't know what they don't know. Exactly. Well, and it's interesting, like, 
there's two sides to that. Like on the one hand, they have been taught and there's a culture of they're supposed to have the answers. And so instead of saying, I think you should consult X, Y, or Z person because I don't know, you know what I mean, right? Like it's more of, well, just that's not the answer. And um, there was a doctor one of my colleagues was working with and he graduated like not that long ago. You know, maybe now it was maybe like five or six years ago. And in all of med school, they had two hours of nutrition and not like two credits, like two hours on a Wednesday. Oh, wow. Wow. And it was probably, you know, I um, was teaching like these weight loss classes at our local YMCA and I was teaching my way of nutrition. And actually mm-hmm. at that time we were doing more carb cycling, which I just think okay. is really kind of too confusing. Um but anyways, they said, okay, now all of a sudden the Y has this approved nutrition. They want you to teach it based on food pyramid. And I'm like, I'm not your nope. girl then. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I am just not your girl. <laughs> so, but that's, yeah. that is what I'm sure the doctors are learning is the government right. approved nutrition. Exactly. And it's, and that's what got us to where we are, right? You know, and it's one of those of the way I describe it for people, like when we, when we are talking about our health and putting together, like as our own health advocate and putting together our wellness team, right? You want to have your doctors on there, right? You break your arm, you need Western medicine, right? Absolutely. Like there are definitely times when your surgeon and, you know, your MD and DO, right? Like our Western doctors are incredibly knowledgeable and incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And we want them to be one piece of our wellness team. Yeah. And so looking at, you know, different philosophies and different practitioners and different modalities so that we're getting a well-rounded input, (laughs) right? We're getting information from a lot of different places because one of the ways I describe it is like, so Western medicine we're compared to each other. So your normal range or your acceptable range on different vitamins and minerals and, you know, nutrients in your system is based on the population. Right. And what the average healthy, in air quotes, person has. Right? We're compared to each other. Mm-hmm. Eastern medicine compares us to proper structure and function in biology. Yeah. So there's an optimal level. There's a proper level versus an acceptable or a normal. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like the the labs are not necessarily the optimal. They're just the average. And you know it's based on demographics too, the Mm -hmm. lab reports. So it could be like in our community or in our state or whatever based on – so it has nothing to do with ideal. So right. when you talk about Eastern medicine, did you study any any of that before, like Ayurveda or Chinese medicine or anything like that? So uh, personally, I've I've dabbled, I will say, but one I work very closely with an acupuncturist who studied traditional Chinese medicine, and so I've picked up a lot over the years, um, and it's one of the, like it's just fascinating. Mm-hmm. And the approach and the way everything fits together, I'm, I'm like an insatiable student. Like I can't get enough of it. So never say never. Maybe I'll go back. Maybe you know that'll be the next thing. We'll, well see. how old are you? Thirty-seven. Go back. If it appeals to you, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I even considered I'm going to be fifty-six, so I don't really want to start over. But um, you're so young that I think. If you have any desires, just go for it. Yeah. Um, but I'm with you on the whole acupuncture thing. Like, I know a lady in town that I've been with several times, and she actually does Japanese acupuncture. Mm-hmm. So it's a little different than the Chinese style. Like, they use smaller, final, more needles and stuff. Um, but what I find really fascinating, Jen, is the whole energy component of our bodies that most people don't talk yeah. about. Yeah. 
So I've sure, I'm sure you've learned a lot about that from your acupuncture friend. Yeah. And it's one of those where I think the biggest piece of what we don't realize is that everything is energy. Our food is energy. You, you know, like coming back to more of that, the health stuff and the nutrition stuff that's more, you know, it's everything is energy. So if we're not feeling great, <laughs> right, or we're feeling a little low on energy, well, what are all the inputs? Mm-hmm. You know, and where is everything coming from? And it probably makes total sense when we start to look at it more objectively rather than through the lens of what's wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the thing. To me, it's the energy that actually has the distortion that creates the problem from the lack of communication within your body. So when you clear mm-hmm. up that distortion, now your body has a better chance or is more effectively able to communicate. So things get done, you know? Yeah. So tell us absolutely. A, tell us a little bit about your typical day, Jen. Like what do you do on a just a you know, an average day? as far as like your food, your movement, your practices, all of that. Yeah. So, um, first thing, like I, so I'm a big skincare junkie. So morning and night, right? Like I, my skincare routine. Um, so wake up, get dressed, wash my face. The first thing I put on is always my workout clothes. Although these days it's work from home. So it's what I wear all the time anyway. (laughs) Um, But so, and then I start with my vitamins. So setting a foundation and filling in the gaps. Um, The ones that I use are basically the closest to IV nutrition that you can get like orally. So that requires them to be taken on an empty stomach. So that's why it's the first thing that I eat or drink. Empty stomach. That's interesting. I have not, I've heard that vitamins should be taken with food. Well, those would be pill vitamins that you would want to take them with food because a pill vitamin, you have to break down the binders and the fillers and the coating. And so it's going to create, right? Like your stomach is going to release acids to break it down. And if that's the only thing in your stomach, that's a problem, right? That's where you can get sick. These are actually what we call isotonic or same pressure. So it actually bypasses the digestive system because it, it... is the same osmotic pressure as your blood, your sweat, your tears, like an IV is. Hmm. So you drink it and it doesn't actually sit in your stomach. It bypasses the digestive system. How does it get absorbed then? So through in the intestines where everything is absorbed. So it, it doesn't sit in the stomach for your stomach acids. It goes directly into the small intestine. So depending on the health of your gut, you'd be You'll probably absorb upwards of about 90% of what it says on the package, right? Because it's close to an IV versus like a pill vitamin where you'd be lucky if you absorb 20 to 30% of what it said. Okay, send me some info on that because I usually don't eat until lunchtime and I work out in the morning. And so I just like hardly never take my vitamins in the morning because I don't eat, you know? And then by the time I eat, my day is just going and... Yeah, so send me some info on that. Sure. Um, So anyway, sorry to interrupt. So No, no, totally. But I might do it again. (laughs) Totally fine. So take my vitamins. And then first thing is um, I'm typically doing my workout. So these days that's on Instagram Live, (laughs) you know, or a web-based platform in my living room. And um, after that, I'll go to breakfast and kind of sit down for the day, tackle emails and, um, you know, get things going with, I have a few businesses in the mix. So working on that. And then later in the day, I try to get out as much as I can for a walk. Well, what do you have? Rewind. What do you have for breakfast? Oh, I'm a big egg person. Me too. So yeah. So, you know, protein and fiber, right? So I'm Eggs and veggies, sometimes some fruit, um, maybe some avocado in there, right? So getting myself set up, good foundation for breakfast. Um, and then I'm like off and running because I've got that energy. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, yeah. keep going. So you go for um, a walk. So later in the day, I, I like to go for a walk, fresh air, sunshine. And also I'm in New York City. And these days, right, we're just not out and moving as much. So 
love to get a good walk in. Um, if I'm not getting out for a walk, sometimes I'll do another workout or something later in the day just to move the energy. Yeah. <laughs> right. What part because of New York do you live in? I'm in the city. What part though? Uh, I'm in between, um, like the villa, like the West Village and Union Square. Oh, okay. So you live in Manhattan. Yeah. No, my son lives in yeah. Brooklyn. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love visiting. So fun. Okay, yeah. so I interrupted you, and I'm sorry about that. So I just no, that's to, okay. So you go back to so I I walk around New York and so go for a walk. I like to walk by the water, right? Mm-hmm. Get a little nature, a little sunshine. Um, it's also easier to walk over there because you don't have to stop at every block, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or if I'm not getting a walk, sometimes I'll do an, a workout later just to keep the energy moving because our movement is just not the same these days. Um, so I typically have a chunk of my day where I have some me time in the afternoon. Nice. And then, and part of it is too, with my clients, I work at night, right? Cause for them, it needs to be after the work day. So there's a couple nights a week where I'm working in the evening. Um, or, you know, I do a lot of online networking and meeting people these days. So there's a mix of that in there. Um, I'm a TV junkie, so I will admit, <laughs> got to get a little TV time in there. What's your favorite show? Oh, my gosh. I need more parameters than that because there's way, really way too many. Okay, funny. Uh, um, Ted Lasso was one of the best shows of quarantine. Ted Lasso. Okay, I'll have to check yeah. that out. Jason Sudeikis. I can't remember if it was on Netflix or Amazon, but just funny and like one of those shows where you're actually rooting for every single character. Mm, cool. So, okay. It was good. Um, I also am like a sucker for like true crime, mm. like random documentaries on Netflix. That like you know. <laughs> oh, that stuff scares the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very strange, but I really enjoy those. Um, and then later in the day, right evening, I actually, um, like before bed, I have like another little cocktail of vitamins that I'll take in the evening, like calcium, magnesium, um, some herbs that support detoxification and immune support, things like that. So I take those start to get ready for bed, right. Cleaning up my skincare routine. I have a gratitude journal Mm. and I've also started to meditate before bed. Um, and that's been, so the gratitude journal. So every night before I go to sleep, I write down five things that I'm grateful for from that day. And sometimes it's as silly as like it was raining and I didn't have to go out in the rain or, you know, you know, back when we used to go places, it was like, oh, the train came right when I, <laughs> you know, walked down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes it's the big stuff of, you know, I just had time to sit and like FaceTime with my nephew yeah. and we played a game, but I was on a phone. That's cute. You know, so, yeah. So, you know, gratitude, five things. And then I um, have a meditation that's about 15 minutes or so before I go to bed and then it's bedtime and then we wake up and do it all again. So what are your favorite <laughs> lunches and dinners? Okay. So, um, lunch, I tend to do a salad of sorts cause I'm, I'm such a big vegetable person. Um, I'm trying to think I'll change it up as far as, you know, protein and what I have. Um, I do eat animal protein. So sometimes it's, you know, chicken or once in a while I'll get these like grass fed beef burgers from a butcher. Um, and so usually like that in a salad, I also sometimes for breakfast, sometimes for lunch, I'll do a salad and if, and eggs might be the protein, but if you leave the yolk runny and put them on the salad, the yolk, the runny yolk makes like this creamy salad dressing. Oh. And like every time I say this, people think I'm crazy and then they try it and they're like, oh my God, it's genius. And I'm like, yeah, 
you're welcome. So <laughs> try it. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Um, so I'll do that or, you know, a sa- salad with um, some kind of protein or whatever. Dinners. So I've started since, you know, quarantine, I've started making fish. Um, wait, wait, wait. Why is it all of a sudden you started making fish because of quarantine? Because, well, first of all, so I, I live in New York. Fish tends to be smelly. I would just, fish would be the thing I would get when I, you know, ordered or ate at a restaurant instead of making it at home. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, so for 10 plus years, I was working, right? Like I was working full time. I had my business on the side. I didn't go to a grocery store. I ate every meal, you know, oh, out at a restaurant or, or whatever ordered in. So first of all, you can do this eating out all the time, you guys. Um, (laughs) so, you know, fish was usually more of a restaurant thing than an at home thing, but, um, there's a place that I order fish from called Ristelli. Um, it's amazing. Everything is individually packaged and frozen. And I would normally be like, Ooh, frozen fish. This stuff is amazing. I don't know how they manage it. It is unbelievable it never smells anyway you want a link send me a message I'll send it um (laughs) so my I make like a single cookie sheet dinner so whatever vegetables I have change it whether you know eggplant or Brussels sprouts or broccoli carrots whatever I'm a big vegetable person so grab a and I like variety so couple handfuls of a couple different kinds of vegetables, throw them onto the cookie sheet, oil, pepper, a little bit of salt, just cause I'm not really a salt person, but, um, and then I'll put a piece of fish in the middle. Mm. So oil, some pepper, and then sometimes I'll do, I have like sort of four different varieties. So sometimes I'll cover it, cover the piece of fish in like marinara sauce. Sometimes I'll cover it in Dijon mustard. Sometimes I'll just slice up a lemon and like cover the whole thing in lemon slices. Oh, yeah. Um, Or sometimes I'll use like Bragg's amino acids, right? And Mm -hmm. just sprinkle the amino acid in the oven, 400, 425 for like 10 to 12 minutes. That's fast. Take it out, dump the whole thing. Yeah, it's super fast. And I use parchment paper, so I don't even have to clean the cookie sheet. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, super fast. I will admit, when you're making this for more than one person, you might need more than one cookie sheet. But it's super fast, super easy, really delicious and healthful. And, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy to make a simple, delicious, healthful meal. Oh, that sounds really good. That's a good tip. I like that. I'm going to steal yeah. it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. I just bought, what did I buy today at the store? Halibut and scallops. So Yum. that's dinner tonight. Yeah, do it with the halibut in mm-hmm. the middle of the cookie sheet, a bunch of vegetables. Yeah. Well, the vegetables I bought are green, so that's going to be harder. Okay. I didn't buy any cruciferous or anything like that. Yeah. I just bought like collard greens and Swiss chard. So you yeah. have to saute those. Saute but... those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. So what knowledge would you want to, or what inspiration would you want to leave the audience with? So on the knowledge front, I would say some of what we talked about before, protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat. No big deal. Muscle dictates metabolism. Um, going back to what we talked about as far as, um, that black and white thinking and sort of learning to live in the gray area. Consistency is king. It's not about the perfect day or the perfect week or the perfect month. Like you will get further having some, a whole string of muddy days than having an absolutely perfect day once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing is almost where we started of this is so chemical. It's not your fault. 
you know, if you've fallen off the wagon in air quotes, right, with diets out there, like it's not your fault. The diet, those diets and plans were not designed to be for forever. And it's very chemical. Our willpower is even chemical. So you don't suck. You haven't failed. And you can do this. It's just a little bit of tweaking in the information and the tools and developing the tool belt so that you have everything you need to go on and live the rest of your life. Yeah. And do it now while, while you still have options, you know, before you go down into the, you know, sickness realm and it's harder to pull you out. And mm. where can people find you? Yeah. So the easiest place. So salad with a side of fries is the podcast. Wherever you're listening now, we are there. And hang out most of the time on Instagram at Jen Trepek, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. And that's actually my handle everywhere. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you like to be, at Jen Trepek. Awesome. You are a doll. I oh, You are super you. cute, super funny, and um, what a pleasure to have you on the show today. So thank you for coming. Likewise. Such a great time. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please head on over to check out the show notes page so you can find Jen's links and her awesome podcast at highenergygirl.com forward slash show. And if you like the show, please head on over to iTunes, give us a rating and review so more people can find our awesome content and learn from our amazing guests. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.